Mark, this is Team A. Do you need us? Yes, hey, Team, this is Mark. I beat you. We need immediate arms support in room 14C. My team and I are being held at gunpoint by a hostile. I repeat, please send immediate arms support to room 14C. Your Steve, though, for that panel, uh, it should connect to the room that we're in. So that is all close to common knowledge, I presume. Not all of you were with us. 
us at the time of the incident. However, you're certainly aware of the effects it has had on our internal procedures over the past few months. Regardless, that was where Tencha's involvement in this came to an end. Or, at least, that's what we assumed. Because on May 8th, at approximately 5.30 p.m., a motion alert was sent out from the complex, which was closed off at the time. One of our senior engineers was sent down to assess the situation and discovered a male dressed in hazard gear who we were able to identify as Peter Tench. Immediately following this discovery, Tench was moved to a secure room on this floor where over the following days a select group of doctors were able to administer a panel of tests in order to determine what had happened to Peter in the two months he had been gone. Uh, those tests yielded very little useful information. Uh, by all measures, Peter appeared to be in excellent health. However, we were still provided one very useful tool in understanding uh, how the situation unfolded from his perspective. Some of you may recall that on the day of his disappearance, Tench was his team's designated camera operator. Well, when we recovered him, he still had that camera in his possession, and in fact had documented the entire ordeal. Uh, the footage will be presented in its entirety later today, however, for the purpose of this discussion, I will only be highlighting key events. This is the hallway where Peter was last seen. They're not in view, but you can hear the others walking behind him. Now, as he approaches the branch on the right here, pay close attention to the audio. Guys, can you hear this? and 
using stolen credentials, forced his way back into the complex where he would go undiscovered until just last night, when he ambushed and violently attacked Team B in room 14C, leaving Dr. Bloom in critical condition. We can presume that during the two or so days Tem spent in the complex, he let go of the idea that he could somehow escape through an alternate threshold, but still held on to the belief that all of us here were working to trap him in some way, despite our actions saying exactly the opposite. Immediately after firing a single shot from the Remington 870 to Dr. Bloom's side, Tench fled the scene and headed to the threshold outpost, where he would turn the weapon on several more of you while progressing into standard and through the lower offices. Given the abrupt and chaotic nature of the unfolding situation, it took our security team several moments longer than he ideally should have to figure out what was happening. But thankfully, while Tench was passing through one of the empty labs next to storage, Dr. Maxwell was able to act quickly and managed to disarm him, accidentally discharging the weapon into the ceiling in the process, though. However, Tench still managed to avoid apprehension, fleeing into the maintenance wing and evading our security staff by taking the freight elevator to the surface. Now, this situation could have played out very badly given the potential number of witnesses around the building at the time. But luckily for everyone involved, as far as we can tell, Tench was not noticed as he exited the property. Around five minutes later, our security team made it to the ground floor and began a thorough sweep in the direction of the hillside where cameras had last observed Tench. Now, there's no easy way to say this other than to just say it. I am terribly sorry to inform you all, but Mr. Tench was found deceased halfway down the hillside the result of an extreme blow to the head. It appears that while he was running through some brush, he failed to anticipate a sudden dip in the ground and tragically fell forward into a large rock. Given the circumstances, it was not something any of us could have anticipated or prevented. The tragedy of the entire situation undoubtedly remains, but Dr. Tench, regardless of how troubled he was in his final days, was a really man who gave his all to this project. He would certainly not want us hindering it in his name. What we're doing here is so much bigger than any one person. It is the work of a unified effort, and we need to ensure that that is never lost sight of, that we hold on to the pre-established notion that Peter is and has been deceased. That is done, and there is nothing more to be extracted.